Welcome to the bizarre conclusion of 19 Summers, a motovlog series that begins with a mechanical failure of a KLR 650 motorcycle and ends with a mechanical failure of a KLR 650 motorcycle. The symmetry is just fantastic! And the last time I was on this road, my bike broke down. Here's hoping today goes much smoother. It doesn't. On today's episode, not only does my motorcycle break down, leaving me stranded on a back road in British Columbia far from cell reception and assistance, but I find refuge in a hermitage with an unhinged pastry chef who will eventually threaten to kill me. Just let that sink in. That's all coming up, but first, a recap. On the last video, I was staying at my favorite campground in BC, Toad Rock Motorcycle Campground. I spent my days there riding around on gravel roads and my evenings being okay, now dance with each other. <laughs> weird. From there, I returned to my home in Canmore, Alberta, pausing for one rainy night in the cusp, BC. I'm bored. I'm bored right now. Let me give you a tour of my surroundings. That's my feet. And that's it. Although my month-long vacation had not yet ended, I needed to return home to do some maintenance on my relationship with my girlfriend. <laughs> I mean, I needed to help my lovely partner, L. West, do some maintenance on her motorcycle. After that, and with only one week left before I had to return to work, I hopped on my motorcycle once again and headed for Toad Rock. This time I took Highwood Pass to connect with Gravel Road South to Coleman, Alberta. Although my motivation to capture everything and vlog about it had begun to wane over the summer, I decided to set up at least one shot to capture the landscape on this dusty road. That's my camera up there. It's recording. All because I want to have a little footage of me riding towards the camera. Ugh. Now there's probably going to be a truck, probably a Ford F-150 if I had to guess. It'll come burning through and kick up some dust and ruin the shot. Ah! So dusty! Hey, look at that! It's a Ford F-150! And it's ruining the shot! I predicted it! Well, I called that one very specifically, didn't I? I'm like the Nostradamus of motorcycle vlogging. Although, in Alberta, it doesn't exactly take a crystal ball to predict that a Ford F-150 will barrel through and ruin your shot. It's like predicting you'll see a bunch of tie-dye at a fish concert, or a mustache on a firefighter. Now, all that dust will be there. That's how you do that. <sighs> anyway, the next day I rode through Kimberley, BC, once again going up and over Grey Pass to arrive at Toad Rock, my second home. More campfires, more guitar, more boozy nights and gravel roads, and then it was time to go home for good. But this summer, 19 summers, one that had already been strange, was about to get a whole lot stranger. So the bike is running now, and I can get it turned around fine, but it's going to kick out soon. If I can just get it to the top of that hill, no, I can't. So now I'm literally back where I started. <sighs> Something ain't right. Something ain't right. 
I planned to ride another of my favorite gravel roads to get home, a road that runs through Trout Lake, BC, before connecting with a ferry and a road that takes you to the Trans-Canada Highway. At the midpoint on this road, at the farthest point one could possibly be from cell coverage, my KLR began to sputter and it eventually died. All the time you hear people say, oh, the nice thing about a KLR is you can fix it on the side of the road. It'll never break down. That's a bunch of horse um, KLR is broken down and I'm gonna start doing some reading in my climber manual about the electrical system because I think that's the problem. But if I learned anything from reading Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance all these years ago, is that I shouldn't assume that it's a problem with the electrical. It acts like an electrical problem. And if I had a multimeter here, I could check to see if there's anything in the battery. I believe the battery is completely dead. A friendly mechanic and his partner from Vancouver happened by. Yeah, you meet the nicest people when you're uh, broken down. Hello. Didn't even get your name. Uh, Richard. Richard. Yeah. Beth. Beth? Yeah. Uh, getting a boost here on my bike. So that's the problem. It is definitely a charging problem. Because the battery was at like three, three volts. Three volts. Yeah. It's dead. She dead. Together we discovered that the battery had gone flat. After charging it up, the mechanic left me to put the bike back together, assuming that I could now limp along at least to Trout Lake, if not in a cusp. Alas, this was not to be. Um, I'm getting to wonder if it's more than a problem with just the battery. What would Robert Persig say about that? Don't assume. So now I'm just going to get my bike to some place off the side of the road. So there's a wide spot over here. I can coast on down. Yeah, there's nothing. Nothing. She pooched. I don't know what to do. YouTube. I'm gonna park my bike here where it's off the side. I'm gonna hitchhike into Trout Lake so I can make some phone calls. That is my plan. Do I take all of my stuff with me? Do I leave it here? I know that it's a really good place to be, like as far as thievery goes, but hey. Anybody can be tempted, so I'll probably lock it up. Although, the thieves that did take my stuff in a previous video rendered my bag unlockable. So I can't lock the one bag that has already been stolen once before. Okay, hitchhiking. Yep, so that's that. I am leaving my Kawasaki KLR650 right there. And um, I'm now waiting for a ride into Trout Lake. There's nothing in Trout Lake, but I think there's cell reception. Nope, there's not. So I can make some phone calls. Nope, no you can't. I'm leaving all my camping stuff here. So if there's only a campground in Trout Lake, then I don't know what to do. That's Hogan, he's speeding away. I just hitchhiked with him, logger dude, and now I'm in Trout Lake, where there is nothing, there's nothing, but there is a payphone. There was a payphone, yes, but I didn't have any coins with me, and the phone would not accept my credit card. I was forced to make collect calls. Do you know who answers collect phone calls? Nobody. Nobody answers collect phone calls. So after about 45 minutes or an hour of trying to call this friend and that friend, I finally gave up and went knocking on doors. I did find a lady who offered to give me a ride up into the woods to an Airbnb that she knew about. Uh, this is getting very strange. I ended up at a and b up here, way in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it's a cool place, actually. This uh, French man has built this house 20 years ago or something like that, log house and he's being very helpful and uh, we're gonna go get my motorcycle now i think we're gonna do a rescue in that ford ranger
Remember when I said that a pastry chef threatened to kill me? Yeah, that hadn't happened yet. So far this man was being very helpful, although on this twilight motorcycle rescue, red flags began to appear. Pastry chef went on and on about people who had double-crossed him and not paid bills, forcing him to seek revenge, that sort of thing. And even more troubling, he made casual references to historical atrocities. I'm being intentionally vague so as not to upset anyone, including the YouTube algorithm. For now, just understand, I saw red flags. It's uh, Sunday, September 5, and uh, last night's rescue went pretty well to plan. I'm just waiting right now for uh, Brian, my dear friend Brian Bailey, to come out from Calgary with his car and a motorcycle trailer so we can transfer this bike onto his trailer and then get back to Canmore or Calgary. Brian has come to our rescue a number of times and I appreciate him very much. Uh, communication has been a problem because there is no cell coverage up here and does not have internet unless he fires up his generator, um, which he is loath to do because it costs money. So uh, if he needs to grind coffee, he'll fire up his generator. And when he's doing that, I can log on to the internet real quick and say to Brian, help me. And I can give him, you know, not coordinates, but directions to this place. There's been a funny back and forth going on about payment and how much I owe and how much he's doing out of the kindness of his heart. I think we finally settled on an arrangement that works for both of us. <sighs> so anyway, it's a waiting game now. I'm gonna start a fire and maybe do some reading if I can keep my mind from bouncing around. And I am waiting for a trustworthy friend to come from Calgary to pick me up. God bless you, Brian. And there's another friend standing on standby, really. If Brian couldn't have done it, then Neville would have. So I've got good people in my life uh, who are capable and willing to dig me out of holes that I find myself in. I appreciate that. Thank you, gentlemen, and to everyone who offered help. I didn't reach out to many people because no cell phone, no internet. That's how my day's going. So. Um, I slept inside last night, even though the arrangement was for me first, well, it's complicated. First, the arrangement was for me to stay in or his B&B at $125 a night. But then when he realized I was on a budget, he said, oh, you can pitch your tent for just 25 bucks a night. And then he said, oh, no, you can stay in this other room that I've got. And if you do that, you can stay there for free. And uh, I am going to pay him um, for his time and... I mean, he's running a business, a B&B. &B. This isn't uh, a charity. And then I'm going to give him something for his troubles last night. And in the end, uh, I think this is the agreement that, we've, that we're sticking with. He has offered to accept payment in the form of books. So he's got a friend in Canmore. I am going to uh, give him one copy of each of my books, for those of you who are wondering. Uh, Through Dust and Darkness is my second book. Motorcycle Therapy is my first book. And then I have two books. Uh, motorcycle Travel Anthologies called Motorcycle Messengers and Motorcycle Messengers 2. So I'm going to give him a copy of each one of those. And then I'm going to give him additional copies that he can then sell to his B&B uh, &B guests. Time for me to go start a fire. See if I can help earn my keep here a little bit. Before enlightenment, you chop wood and carry water. After enlightenment, you chop wood and carry water. Between when my motorcycle broke down and when I first heard Brian's car roll up the driveway, about 30 hours had elapsed. During this time, communication had been spotty at best and virtually impossible at worst. When I heard his car roll up, you can just imagine my relief. It's a Brian. Oh, that trailer's an upgrade from the one we used before. The trailer's an upgrade. Huh? That trailer's an upgrade. Yeah, it's totally upgrade. It's for a KLR. It's for a KLR. We loaded the motorcycle, said farewell to the pastry chef, and lit off for the ferry. If we missed it, it would add an hour to our travel time. 
Brian had just driven nearly seven hours from Calgary to reach me. We had another seven hour return trip and Brian had to catch a flight just a few hours after we hoped to get home. We missed the ferry and caught the next one an hour later. Now, you're probably thinking, Jeremy, you said that in this video a pastry chef threatened your life. Where's that part? Okay, here's what happened. Remember when I said this? There's been a funny back and forth going on about payment and how much I owe and how much he's doing out of the kindness of his heart. I think we finally settled on an arrangement that works for both of us. Well, Pastry Chef kept changing his mind and being very vague about what I owed him. I never asked for a reduced price. I never bargained. I just wanted a firm number, a number that I could afford and that he could accept. But then, because he was off-grid, he could not accept an e-transfer. He could not accept payment by credit card. The very last thing he said to me was, no payment required. Just give me one copy of each of your books. And there's no hurry. Before Brian and I left, I gave him all the cash in my wallet, a meager $30 or so. It's just a down payment, I said. There's more coming. My intention was to, if anything, overpay this man. I would get him enough cash and or books via his Canmore friend before Christmas. That should do it, I thought. Apparently, Pastry Chef had other ideas. He did not have my contact information, and I did not have his. But he did have Brian's phone number for some reason. That's how he delivered the threat. Brian didn't save the message, and I never heard it. But Brian said it was disturbing. There was the threat of gun violence towards me if we ever met again, and Brian suggested that I do not send any books to this man. Don't have anything with my name on it in his house. Brian even suggested that I do not pay anything because it would then look as though I were cowering and even rewarding his threats. But Pastry Chef did help me when I needed it, and I needed to honor my commitments, as I had always intended to do. Funny enough, at this moment, Brian happened to be camping at Toad Rock. Against his better judgment, but bravely, he volunteered to deliver $200 in cash to the very door of the pastry chef for me. Pastry chef was not home when Brian rolled up, and Brian left the money inside the front door with a note saying it was from me. That could have ended it, but still, I had made a promise to send books. I gathered just one copy of each of my books and delivered them, unsigned, to the Canmore friend of Pastry Chef, who incidentally seemed like a very nice man. I included a thank you card, but I also expressed disappointment and concern about the threat. Ultimately, I'm confident that I properly compensated this man and in a timely fashion. I'm just sorry that it turned sour at the end. I would have liked to have gone back up this summer to enjoy some French pastries with my friends. After all, they were pretty good, just not good enough to risk getting shot. 19 Summers, the Motovlog series that begins with a mechanical failure of a KLR650 motorcycle and ends with a mechanical failure of a KLR650 motorcycle. The symmetry is just fantastic. In both instances, Brian was right there with me to save my doohickey. That's KLR humor. For the mechanically curious, the problem with the bike ended up being a faulty battery that would not hold the charge. I had just purchased it, and it was still under warranty. Good news there. What's next for this channel? Well, Elle and I still have some videos to share from South America, so watch for those. I'll be doing some motorcycle rallies and bike shows in the future. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram for updates. If you're still watching, you must be a true fan. Thank you. I'll see you on the road.